Stephanie Myers. Cities across the country are increasing police patrol as officials brace for what's expected to be a rise in crimes this summer. However, many Democrat-led cities have cut funding to police departments and budgets, which only exacerbates the issue. Here to talk about this further is senior researcher for Texas Public Policy Foundation, Randy Peterson, who is a retired law enforcement officer. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Stephanie. Studies show that crime in increased during summer as a result of people not being home as often, leaving windows open and so forth. What has your experience been like as an officer during the sum summer months compared to winter, for example? Well, summer tends to be busier, especially in, in states that experience a cold winter where, um, you know, crime kind of drops off a little bit in the winter as people stay home and uh, things like that. So areas like Minneapolis, Chicago, New York that experience those those winters will notice that kind of a, a trend probably more than somewhere like California might. Um, however, there's more going on here than just the seasonal effect of, uh, of crime uh, right now. You touched on it in your opening there. Um, you know, the defund the police movement, uh, while may not directly affect the number of police officers yet, because generally speaking, the, the cuts are made in training and other areas other than personnel. Um, but it sends a signal to police officers, right, that uh, maybe their governmental unit doesn't, uh, isn't going to back them when they go out and do proactive policing, which is what keeps crime down, right? Law enforcement pressure on criminals is what keeps crime low, despite what uh, academia might tell you about different data points and, and things like that. The experience police officers have on the street is that law enforcement pressure is what keeps crime low. And then policy decisions that have been made in areas like New York, where they disbanded their 600 officer um, anti-crime unit, um, or Portland, where they get rid of their 12 officer uh, anti-gun unit. You know, we see corresponding spikes in those, in those kinds of crimes, shootings and murders in both of those cities. Those are policy decisions that, you know, got rid of proactive policing that was at the tip of the spear to prevent that. Absolutely. And on that note, we're continuing to see spikes in crime in Democrat-led cities, some of which you mentioned, the same cities which chose to defund their police departments. But some say even if they increased patrol in hot spots, it's only a Band-Aid and not a solution. What do you, what do you say to that? Um, well, in part, that's, that's probably true. Um, one of the things that needs to happen is we need to move out of this era of um, and most of it, almost all of it, coming from the, the far left of anti-police rhetoric uh, that makes police officers hesitant to do the proactive policing that uh, keeps crime down. Um, when, when the police don't feel that they have the support of their communities and their governmental units, they, um, they're going to take appropriate non-action sometimes. Um, they'll respond to calls, they'll, you know, they'll go where they have to, but it's the proactive policing that uh, that gets crime lower, that puts that, that lid on, on criminality. So when you have, uh, you know, someone like uh, a Democrat mayor in Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, saying that she wears it as a badge of honor that the police department had a vote of no confidence against her, um, that's really sending a bad signal to the, to the police department, especially in areas like that in Chicago, where they really need um, their police to be proactive and out there as part of the community uh, keeping crime low. Absolutely, and as we know, Chicago, for as you pointed out, they have very strict gun control laws, but even then we still see weekend shootings, a rise in homicides time over time again. Now, a new report shows about 20% of the Seattle police force have quit in recent weeks. We know the risks that officers face, not knowing if they will come home at the end of the day. What are some of the other challenges police face that the public may not be aware of? Well, that's a great point. Uh, police officers really don't complain about that. They accept it as, as part of their, their job. You, you won't hear them speak in, in victimhood terms, right? They don't consider themselves victims, despite the fact that almost every police officer in the United States is at some time in their career the, the victim of a violent crime, but they don't look at it that way and they don't call it that. Um, so that's for them a given. But the part that the public, and, the, and I think the public understands that um, part, but places more emphasis on it maybe than even law enforcement themselves do. Uh, the part that really uh, law enforcement 
has, has the public needs to understand is that when um, they take they, when they are doing their job, any mistake could end them up in jail or injured, right? Um, it's not just injured, right? They they face that all the time, the the possibility of that. Um, but you know, we we see in some of these uh, use of force decisions that are made in split seconds, with where an officer is in fear for their life, and a few days later, sometimes such as in Georgia, before the investigation's even completed, they're charged with murder. Um, that's becoming increasingly uh, a frequent occurrence. Um, that is what will prevent police officers from wanting to continue doing their jobs or from new officers coming in, not the fear of injury. You provide a really interesting perspective, especially as a retired law enforcement officer yourself. Again, a senior researcher for Texas Public Policy Foundation, Randy Peterson. Thank you again for your input, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Florida Representative and Combat Decorated Green Beret Mike Waltz takes aim at Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez over her comments comparing January 6th to, quote, serving in war. Taking to Twitter Tuesday, Waltz called Ocasio-Cortez's statement ignorant, arguing it does a disservice to those who serve our country. Waltz adds the New York representative has never experienced the horrors of war, including losing fellow soldiers on the battlefield, or coming under enemy fire. He says while January 6 was a terrible day, lawmakers should avoid comparing the event to war. Several GOP lawmakers are pushing back against the Biden administration's affinity for critical race theory. Here's more on what they have to say. Joe Biden and the Democrat Party's push to teach school children critical race theory is being met by strong Republican opposition. Tuesday, South Carolina Representative Nancy May sat down with OAN detailing two bills she introduced banning federal funding for the ideology in schools and the military. Mace accuses Joe Biden of